lot of you, Angie. And I think a lot of you too, Steve, except for coming to this place. Ain't that bad, at least it's quiet. Yeah, and it's cold too. I'm shivering to death. Would you be a darling and get the blanket out of the car for me? Be quick, Stephen. I get the creeps in here. I'll only be a minute. Katie. Have a nice weekend, Jane. You too. See you Monday. Bye. Bye-bye.
scared me. You dropped your purse. Yeah. Um, thank you. Are you hungry, Dorian? Thank you. 
In local news, county police say they have no suspects in the bizarre murder of a young Milford woman whose body was found late this afternoon on Brookwood Road. The victim, 21-year-old Jane Clayton, was apparently on her way home from work after being dropped off nearby by a friend whom Miss Clayton had worked with. Police on the scene of the strangulation killing have ruled out robbery as the motive because they say Miss Clayton's pocketbook containing her wallet and $147 in cash was found beside the body unopened. In other news, the governor announced today that legislation would soon be introduced into the General Assembly. Hey, honey. Honey, I'm home. Marsha? Hi, sweetheart. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Last minute, making the bed. Making the beds, huh? No, don't worry. Dinner's on the stove and everything's fine. Oh, you try so hard to please me. Well, <laughs> I happen to love you and I like pleasing you. And if you don't like it, you can... I know. I can stick it. <laughs> Doesn't that guy ever quit? A long fellow? Yeah, a long fellow. Why can't he keep his music in his music studio? How do you know that he gives private lessons at night? I don't care. When I come home, I like to have a little peace, and quiet, and maybe a little privacy. Mm -hmm. I think I hear someone complaining. You're damn right. For seven months, he's lived next door. For seven months, we've had nothing but screeching violins. Madness. Oh, really? I was thinking about taking lessons myself. Well, you can forget it. Well, I'm going to say something to him, Marsha. Who? The Longfellow, that's who. You are not. Marsha, I am. There's got to be some sort of privacy law or something against you. Gary, I don't believe you sometimes. The man never plays past 9 o'clock, number one. And number two, when the Johnsons lived next door, all you did was complain about them. All right, all right, forget it, forget it. How can I, when you complain about it every night? Well, I'm sorry, it bothers me, that's all. As much as I hated the Johnsons, sometimes I wish they were still there. Yeah, I found out I got a work a half day tomorrow. Oh, that's all right. I have to go over to Nancy's tomorrow and pick up a camera. Camera? What for? You know we had the Boy Scout meeting today. Yeah? Well, the boys decided they'd like to do a science fiction movie in the spring. Yeah? Well, that'll be something to see. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, did you hear about that girl? No, what girl? Some young girl over in Milford strangled to death. Oh, God. I hate to hear that kind of thing. Or me, too. It's too close to here. Mm-hmm. What kind of maniac would do that? Sure, I don't know. And tomorrow? We shall renew ourselves again. Here's your appointment card, Danielle. Have a nice lesson. Say thank you to Mr. Fry. Longfellow's Music Academy. Mr. Fry speaking. Hello, Dennis. This is Mr. Longfellow. Oh, good morning, sir. Uh, Dennis, I'm going to be a few hours late this morning. I have an outside appointment. Very good, sir. I want you to tend personally to Mr. Rigby's lesson. I certainly will, sir. Oh, and Mr. Longfellow, don't forget tonight. Tonight? Yes, sir. 
I'll be by to go over the monthly receipts, and you have a lesson with Miss Weiss. Yes, of course. Well, listen, I must go now, Dennis. Yes, I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Mr. Longfellow. Mr. Kender. Miserable morning, isn't it? That depends on your viewpoint, Mr. Kender. So, uh, how's the music business doing? Just fine, Mr. Kender, just fine. Uh, look, Mr. Longfellow, I... Uh... Gary? Yeah, uh, just a minute, Marsha. Mr. Kender, what is it? Gary, can I see you a minute, honey? Well, maybe some other time, Mr. Longfellow, excuse me. Certainly, Mr. Kender, certainly. What do you want, Marcia? You promised him you wouldn't say anything. All I said was hello. Mm -hmm. I swear that's all I said. Yeah. You're going to end up embarrassing both of us. Well, I'd trade a little embarrassment for a little silence. Now, get to work, you're going to get fired. Mm -hmm.
little camera is really neat. It does all kinds of things. Boys are really going to be happy. They're excited about this project. Mm -hmm. You're not even listening to me. Yes, I am, Marsha. The camera's neat and the boys are excited. Oh, my God. What? I don't believe this. What? What is it? They found another girl murdered, just like the girl the other day. Oh, no. And this one was found in her own home. Where? What area? In Kent Hill, just about four miles from us. Gotta be the same killer. You think so? It makes sense. Two girls strangled within a few miles of each other within two days of each other. Mm. It's frightening. And it's sickening. Although the piano lessons were down a bit this month, sir, we increased our sheet music sales by 23% over last month. Oh, which reminds me, don't let me leave without a box of sheet music for violin solo number three. I need that for Monday. And let's see now. Instrument rentals did well, sir, up 11% this month. All in all, sir, a very profitable month for Longfellow's Music Academy. Very good, Mr. Fry. You've done your usual fine job of managing the academy and balancing the books. Thank you very much, sir. However, I must ask you to gather your things. Miss Weiss is due momentarily for her music lessons. Oh, right away, sir. I almost forgot about Miss Weiss. I'll just get the sheet music and be out of your way. Excuse me, Dorian. Ah, here we are. Oh, I just remembered, sir. gentleman is interested in private lessons, sir. I knew you'd want to take care of that right away. Oh, that must be Miss Weiss. Hello, Helen. How are you? Oh, hi, Mr. Fry. Hello? Miss Weiss? Well, I've got to be going now. Goodbye, Miss Weiss. I'll see you Monday, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Fry. Good night, Dennis. Yeah. Shall we go downstairs? Are you ready to begin, Miss Weiss? Yes, sir. I hope I do better this time. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, let's try the Hall of the Mountain King. Okay. No, no, no. You're not cradling the instrument properly, Miss Weiss. Now, let me show you again. You must hold the bow like this. Now relax your arm, Miss Weiss. Relax your arm, Miss Weiss. Excuse me, Miss Weiss.
sorry to bother you, sir, but I forgot my books and the sheet music. How dare you interrupt my lesson for something so ridiculous? I'm sorry, sir, but the books, the sheet music, I need them for my Enough, sir. Mr. Fry. I will see you Monday morning. There seems to be a stranger parked outside of my house. Do you know who that is by any chance? Oh, sure. He's my boyfriend, Ted. How nice. Are you something wrong? No, not really. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, let's get over mother's before dinner gets cold on us. Thank you. 
What's this? God, I wonder what happened. Hey, Fred. Fred, what the hell's going on here? Oh, hi, Gare. It's just awful. They found little Christy Michaels dead. What? Oh, dear Lord, no. Yeah, they found her back there in the stream with her neck broken. In the stream behind our house? The homicide boys are back there now. Did anybody see anything, hear anything? Well, you and Marsha were out. Grabowski's were out. What about Longfellow? Well, he and his assistant were listening to music with those headphones on. They didn't see anything, and they certainly didn't hear anything. Why don't you come to bed? Marsha, he just has to have seen something. He's the only one who could see anything. Gary, we've been through this all night. You've said a dozen times that Longfellow must have seen something. The police questioned him. If he had seen something, he would have told them. Maybe not. It just burns me up, that's all. Why wasn't I home? That creep Longfellow sits over there listening to his damn music while a little girl is strangled right behind his house. I wish somebody would strangle him. For God's sake, Gary, that's a terrible thing to say. Oh, I'm sorry. That Longfellow is the kind of guy who probably wouldn't say anything if he did see something. He probably wouldn't want to get involved. Stop it, Gary. You're getting carried away with this. Well, I'm going over to talk to that guy. Gary, what are you doing? This isn't like you. Marcia, I am not going to be satisfied until I talk to that guy myself, so don't try and stop me. All right, all right, go over there and make a fool of yourself, but Longfellow will have the last laugh. Don't count on it. Yeah, Mr. Kender, what can I do for you? I'd like to come in and talk to you for a minute, Longfellow. Talk? Yeah, talk. Why not? Come on in. Thank you. Mr. Kender?
Have a seat, Mr. Kender. No, no thanks. Kind of cold and damp down here, isn't it? I prefer it that way. Oh, I thought you just hadn't had a chance to finish your club basement yet. It's about as finished as I require, Mr. Kender. As you can see, I've made it quite comfortable. Well, a little insulation and paneling would make it a lot more comfortable, don't you think? Mr. Kender, what is it you came over to discuss? Look, I'll get right to the point, Longfellow. This little girl getting murdered behind our houses has got us all pretty upset. I'm sure. Now, my wife and I weren't home when it happened, and neither were the Grabowskis. Out of these three houses, the only ones that had a view of where the killing happened, you were the only one home. So? So you must have seen something. You must have heard something. But I didn't. It was very quiet. My assistant, Mr. Fry, and myself were listening to some music that we plan on using at the Academy. Are you telling me you didn't hear a thing? Not a thing. Oh, how rude of me. Would you care for some wine? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll get a fresh bottle. Excuse me? Mr. Kender. Oh, uh, thank you. It's a nice organ. And merely a decoration. Mr. Longfellow, are you positive that you or your assistant didn't see anything today? I mean, I realize people sometimes don't like to get involved with a nasty thing like murder. I don't mind a bit, Mr. Kender, but I'm afraid I can't help you. <coughs> cat, scared me. Dorian, get down. Black cat, huh? Not afraid of bad luck, huh, Longfellow? I'm not superstitious, Mr. Kender. That sort of thing is for children. And women. Well, I better get going. If you or your friend remember anything about the day, you'll let me know, will you? There's nothing to remember, Mr. Kender. Look, if I were you... I'd save my energy. And forget about the whole incident. Incident? Well, this little girl gets murdered in my own neighborhood. I don't call it an incident, Mr. Longfellow. I call it a nightmare.
Well, well, sir, I, I... What is it, Dennis? I hate to bother you at night like this. You've already bothered me, Mr. Fry. Now, what do you want? Oh, uh, I was wondering, sir, if it's not asking too much, if you could tell me why you had me lie to the police. Not that I think you've done anything wrong, sir. Then you will stop questioning me, Mr. Fry. But the police said a child was murdered, sir. I mean, murder is, is a serious thing. Your loyalty is expected, Mr. Fry. And if you value your position at the Academy, you'll not say another word about this to anyone. Or to me. Yes, well, I'm glad we have that understanding. Goodbye, Dennis.
How's my girl? Hi, how are you, sweetheart? Oh, working my fingers to the nub. Yeah, I just called to make sure you've got the doors locked around there. Gary, for God's sake, it's the middle of the afternoon. And both those girls were strangled in the middle of the afternoon, too. Look, I just don't want to have to worry about you when I'm at work, Marcia. Well, don't. I'm fine. As a matter of fact, the doors are locked. Hey, Gary, I'm glad you called. Can you do me a really big favor, honey? Uh-oh. Um, there's this book that we could really use for the Scout Project. The movie? Um, wait a second. Okay, here it is. It's called Film Magic, and Nancy said they have it in stock at the Fantasy Kingdom Bookstore. Marsha, I don't even know where that place is. Okay, I've got that. It's 704 Market Street, the rear entrance. Well, wait a minute. Let me get that down. 704 Market Street. Rear entrance. You sure they have it in stock? All right, honey. All right, hon. Keep the doors locked now. I will. Thanks, honey. I'll see you tonight. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. May I be of help to you? Yeah, maybe. Uh, do you know where I could find uh, Dennis Fry? Why, that's me, sir. What can I do for you? Were you referred to me by another customer, perhaps? No, not exactly. I'd like to ask you some questions about last Sunday afternoon. Uh, last Sunday? Uh, what about it? I understand you were home all day. Home? No, I wasn't home. Why are you asking me these questions? You were not at home on Sunday? Where were you? I don't have to answer that. Got something to hide, huh, Fry? I do not. I told the police everything. Why should I tell you? I don't even know who you are. What are you hiding, Fry? You lied to the police, didn't you? No, I didn't. I told them the truth. Who are you, anyway? I'm somebody who wants to know what you were doing last Sunday. What you were really doing. I told the police. I was with my boss, Mr. Longfellow. We were at his home listening to music. We don't know a thing about that little girl being killed. Who said anything about a little girl getting killed? Why, 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 why else would you be asking me about Sunday? You got a guilty conscience, Fry. I can tell you're lying. I am not. I'm not lying. You just think about this, Fry. If you're giving false evidence or lying to the police on a murder case, then you're going right up the river with your buddy Longfellow. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that, Fry. the movie project going? Fine. This book is really going to help us. In fact, I'd like you to pick up some more copies later this week. Mm, back to the weird bookstore, huh? Weird bookstore? Sure. Books on black magic, witchcraft, voodoo. You mean that my big, strong husband is frightened by a spooky little bookstore? No. But there is something else I find pretty frightening. 
You're serious. Very serious. What is it? Well, I was just talking to Charlie Sims. Remember him? The guy I went to high school with? He's a state trooper now. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, he filled me in on a few things that make my skin crawl. What? Bad enough what's been happening around here the last week or so. But Charlie tells me there's been a whole chain of strangulation murders. Starting over in Monroe County, then in Porter's Town, then in Seville County, and now here in Kingsville. My God. You hear so much of it on the news every day. You just don't realize. Not only that, they even had a grave robbing over in Seville County. Oh, yeah, I know about that. You do? Yeah, um, the Johnsons who used to live next door? Mm hmm It was Elizabeth Johnson's second or third cousin or something like that. Oh, that's right. They were from Seville County. That was her cousin's grave? Yeah, according to Nancy. She's the one who told me about it. I thought I told you about that. Well, if you did, I don't remember it. Well, it was months ago, but it was in all the papers. Um, the guy's name was, um, oh, it was an odd name. It wasn't Johnson. It was, um, William. William Dorian. Yeah, that's it. William Dorian. William Dorian. Damn, that sounds familiar. Did I ever meet that guy? No, he and Elizabeth weren't close. They were distant cousins. Well, that sure sounds familiar. Well, anyway, you can see I'm not being too paranoid about wanting to keep the doors locked around here. There is definitely a psycho loose. Mm -hmm. And Charlie says the cops don't have a single good lead on him. That is frightening. Yep. Look, some of the kids are out front playing. I think I'm going to go out and have a talk with them. Oh, Gary, why don't you leave Christie's death to the police? Because, like Charlie told me, the police have no leads. And I'll just never believe that a little girl can get murdered in a suburban neighborhood in broad daylight without anybody seeing anything. go with the kids. Marsha, I have just seen the strangest thing. With the kids, what? I saw a Longfellow. He looks 70 years old. 70? Probably has the flu or something. Marsha, I'm telling you, he was old and wrinkled. Now, how does a guy go from looking 38 to 70 years old in just a few days? I'm sure he didn't, Gary. I think you're just picking on the man because he plays a violin and you don't like him. That has nothing to do with the way he looks. Still, so you've been picking on Longfellow for a couple of weeks now. And maybe with good reason. I didn't tell you the other night because I didn't want the hassle. When I was over Longfellow's, I saw some things that would make even you wonder. Like what? Like the way he lives, for one thing. He's got that whole basement set up with furniture. No paneling, no ceiling. It's cold and damp down there, and that's the way he likes it. To each his own. Oh, yeah? Well, you ought to see this little room he's got set up down there. He's got it separated from the rest of the cellar with these ugly black curtains. And this room is straight out of the Middle Ages. I mean, skulls, candles, the works. He probably collects antiques as a hobby. Well, in this room, on a table, he's got this chest. And in the chest is a long, sharp knife. And above the table on the walls are all these slashed photographs of girls. Now, you tell me that's not weird. Well, if it bothered you, why didn't you ask him about it? Well, he didn't know I was in the room. I just sort of snooped around a bit while I was getting some wine. There's something sinister over there, Marsha. I just got a bad gut feeling about that guy. If you're so sure there's something wrong with Longfellow, why don't you have Charlie Sims check him out? I already did. He says Longfellow was clean. 
a fine, upstanding member of the community. Hello, sir. I came as soon as I could. Why did you want to meet me here? You didn't tell anyone that you were coming, as I requested? Oh, no, sir. I left Mrs. Rogers in charge until I get back. Very good, Dennis. I don't think you'll be going back, Mr. Fry. <coughs> <coughs> No matter, Dennis. The world will never have to tolerate you again. And neither will I. Hello, Mrs. Rogers. Mr. Longfellow. No, 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 it's nothing like that. In fact, I, I have some very good news for you. Yes. You see, Dennis will not be with us for some time. I've sent him on a buying trip to Europe. And I would like you to 
perform his job in his absence. Well, he'll be gone for quite some time. <laughs> yes, he's very pleased. Well, I don't know what you're going to do with so many copies of film magic, but you can tell your Boy Scout troop they owe old gear thirty-seven fifty. I've already got the money for you, Scrooge. Mm, well, good. Those damn things are expensive. Hey, did you keep the doors locked all day today? Yes, I did, honey, but honestly, Gary, I'm beginning to feel like a prisoner in my own house. Well, look, it's better safe than sorry, at least till they catch that psycho that's running around here. Hey, what have you got there? Oh, just a little reading material I picked up at that weirdo bookstore you've been sending me to. Oh, yeah? What kind of reading matter? It's a weird book. If your Boy Scouts can make a weird movie, I guess I can read a weird book. Oh, yeah? So we can all be weird together? Yeah, something like that. Well, I'm going to go take a shower before dinner, okay, honey? Gare. Gary, are you coming to bed? Honey, it's 11 o'clock. Well, I'll be up in a minute, dear. I just want to read one more chapter. Well, don't make it too late, Gary. You haven't been getting much sleep this week. Besides, it's lonely in bed without you. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, hon. mentioned creatures of legend are fiends. Little has been written about these ghastly beings, but one alleged report comes from Sir Alec Ginswell of London. Ginswell's paper, filed in 1902, describes the fiend as a supernatural entity, possibly representing the culmination of evil throughout the ages. In its purest form, the fiend is a phantom. However, Sir Alec believed that this demon was capable of entering a long-buried corpse and bringing resurrected life to the rotted remains. In this way, the fiend is able to take a place in normal society among ordinary mortals. To maintain its physical host, the fiend must slaughter mortal human beings and drain them of their life force. Without this energy renewal on a regular basis, the fiend's assumed body rapidly degenerates. This alone makes the fiend especially dangerous, according to Ginswell. For to survive, the creature must kill on a continual basis. Sir Alec does give a hint as to some characteristics of his fiend, whom he even named, in this direct quote from his paper. Dorian near well gives himself away. He lives like the corpse he has assumed, staying in cold, dank places, preferring to be near the very earth whence he came. Dorian near well gives himself Dorian away. Dorian near well gives himself away. Dorian, get down.
Excuse me, mister. Didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, well, you sure did. I'm sorry. I guess I'm used to it. These surroundings do get a little spooky. I'm Jimmy Barnes, the caretaker. Hey, Gary Kendall, you're just the guy I want to see. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I heard there's a grave robbing around here about uh, eight or nine months ago. Lord, I thought they let all that die down. You mean Mr. Dory? That's right. You know him? Yeah, I knew him. <laughs> he was a very nice man. You know, I still don't understand why somebody wants to steal his body. Hey, uh, would you mind showing me the grave site? Sure, right over here. Yeah. Hey, how'd you find this place anyway? Oh, a policeman friend of mine told me about it, but uh, I gotta admit, it's kind of hard to find. Yeah, we are in sticks here. <clears throat> there it is. I tell you, I tried patching up the digging spots. But you know, it's strange. Grass just doesn't seem to want to grow here. What kind of guy was this, uh, Mr. Dorian? Oh, he was a mighty fine man. Brought a lot of culture here to Seville. Culture? What do you mean? Well, for one thing, he was one of them there English fellers. Lord, I'd love to hear that man talk. Came from England, huh? Well, yeah, originally, but he settled here about 12 years ago and started teaching music. Music? Yeah, he was a music teacher up to grade school. Oh, boy, did that man love music. Say, is there something wrong, Mr. Kinder? I don't believe this. It's true, honest. I even have his obituary right here. Yeah? Yeah. You know, he was a nice man, I'll tell you. They ran his picture and everything. Hmm. Wait a minute. Hey, you're right there. You sure this guy is dead? <laughs> what do you mean is he dead? Of course he's dead. He better be dead. I saw him laying out in the church three days, and I thought the whole hell bear him. I really need this clipping. Can I have this one? Well, I like that, man. I, I I'll give you five bucks it. for it. Five bucks? No, no. I, I Ten bucks. Ten. No, it's sort of like an heirloom. You know, I really, really like it. Tell you to what I'll it. do. I'll give you 20 bucks for it and I'll send you a copy. Sold. Thanks, I really needed this. Wait, now you send me my copy back. What a fool. Hi, honey. Did you get my note? Oh, where have you been? I've been so worried. Gary, I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. I just don't know what to do anymore. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Marcia. I know you think I've cracked up lately, and running out of the house in the middle of the night last night makes me wonder about myself. But I've found out something absolutely incredible. Unbelievable. Well, what is it, Gary? Tell me. I am, Marsha, but I have been up for 33 straight hours. Gary, you shouldn't do that to yourself. Honey, I have got to go out and splash some water on my face to wake myself up. But if you'll make me a cup of coffee, I'll be down and tell you the whole story. Okay. What can I do for you? Is Mr. Kinder home? Well, he's home, Scotty, but he's very tired. He's taking a nap. It's really important. Could you wake him up? Uh, can you tell me what this is about? It's something I gotta talk to Mr. Kinder about. Can you tell me and I'll tell Mr. Kinder when he wakes up? No, I gotta tell Mr. Kinder. You sure you can't wake him up? 
I don't think so, Scotty. I wish you'd tell me what this is about. He said to tell him if we saw anything. Saw anything? What did you see, Scotty? Nothing. Maybe I'll talk to Mr. Kenner later. I gotta go home now. Scotty, wait a minute. I... Who's out the door? I heard you yell. It was Scotty Renwick to see you. No, he never comes to see you. Scotty, what did he say? Nothing, really. He said that he had to talk to you. He wouldn't tell me a thing. Marsha, why didn't you tell me? I mean, it was something important. Important for what? I'll tell you later, Marsha. Gary! Gary, I wish you'd tell me. You've never been by my house to see me before. Whatever it was must have been pretty important. I'd like to hear what you have to say. It wasn't that important. Then why'd you come to see me? I don't know. Scotty, I think you do know something. Something you were brave enough to tell me this afternoon, but now you're afraid. You know, a terrible thing happened in our neighborhood the other day, Scotty. In fact, a lot of bad things have happened in our area lately. But somebody killing a little girl like Christy Michaels is the worst thing of all. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Kender. Yes, this is Mr. Longfellow next door. I, I'm not... I'm not feeling very well. I haven't been feeling at all well this week, and I was wondering if it would be at all possible if you could bring over some kind of mild painkiller. Any kind of aspirin would be just fine. Um, I don't know if I have any, Mr. Longfellow. Mrs. Kender, I, I would truly appreciate this. I'm not feeling well enough to get to the store myself. Would you please do this favor for me? I'll see if I have some. Yes, I I'll leave the door open, Mrs. Kender. Just walk in and thank you very much. All right, I'll... Scotty, I feel like you know something. Something about Chrissy's death. Something frightening. Something you're afraid to tell me. But you have to tell me. You have to trust me, Scotty. Your parents do. They knew something was bothering you. They sent me in here to find out what it is. Probably laugh at me. Scotty, I promise you I won't laugh. I know what kind of a kid you are. You're not the kind to tell stories. I wish you'd talk to me, Scotty. You may be my last hope. Well, well, I'm just scared I'll make it in trouble. No way, no way. I guarantee you, you're not going to get in trouble. Not with me, not with your parents, not with anybody. But please, tell me. What do you know? Or what have you seen? Lori doesn't have anything to do with Christy getting killed. I don't think. But the other day, I was climbing in a tree behind Mr. Longfellow's house and... Go on. And Mr. Longfellow came out back started walking through the woods. I don't know, it was kind of weird, so I, I followed him, but I wish I didn't. Why, what happened? He went down through the storm drain and up near the road, and then some man came. They started talking, and then Mr. Longfellow, he, he choked the man. It was weird looking. He kind of glowed red. It was horrible. Scotty, would you do me a favor? If your parents will let you, would you come up to my house with me and tell Mrs. Kender just what you told me? And then we'll call the police and tell them too, okay? Okay, as long as they lock up Mr. Longfellow. They will, don't worry. Come on, let's go.
Mr. Longfellow? Longfellow. Mr. Longfellow? Hey, Marsha? Get yourself at home, Scotty. Mr. Longfellow? Clever man, Mr. Kender, but it won't do you any good. You kill her! You kill her!
Thank <laughs> you.